What's up guys? Welcome back to yet another video. Today's video came from a controversy that was sparked on Facebook. Shocker, I know. And the thread was talking about the use of stabilization in FPV videos. Personally, I'm of the opinion you can do whatever to your videos that you want. Stabilization, slow your footage down, crazy color correction, hell, even just fucking CGI an elephant in or something if you want to. Honestly, I don't care and I don't think it matters. All that matters is making an enjoyable video someone can watch all the way through. But back to the topic of stabilization. It seems that there's a lot of people who think a lot of professional FPV pilots Let's use the hyper smooth setting on the GoPro Hero 7 to smooth out their footage. And on top of that, a lot of people seem to think that hyper smooth is this magic wand setting that if you just suck as a pilot, it'll make it look good. It can make any footage look smooth, just slap it on, you're good to go. And that's what I thought, and that's what I was expecting with my very first trials of using hyper smooth. But after a bit of initial testing a while back, I realized the hyper smooth really doesn't work that well. And honestly, from what I saw, it makes your footage look even worse. And there's a bunch of little caveats to using hyper smooth and one of the biggest caveats I found with using hypersmooth is that you can't really use an ND filter or film in low light with it because motion blur really freaks it out. And I was also doing testing with some hypersmooth on, some hypersmooth off, and trying to like swap between videos and see if I can notice a difference, but I decided to go ahead and put the hypersmooth debate to a rest. I've went ahead and slept on two GoPro Hero 7s onto my quad, and I'm gonna be doing side-by-side -side comparison footage of hypersmooth on and hypersmooth turned off to see if you can actually see a difference in the smoothness of the footage. Now I've purposely put some kind of beat up props on here to see if I can add just a little bit of vibrations in the normal footage. So for this testing, the main GoPro is gonna be recording in 2.7K, 30 frames a second, no ND filter, everything on auto, and the same with the top GoPro, which is on everything auto and hyper smooth stabilization turned on. Now the difference is that I'm gonna be trying a bunch of different recording settings with the hyper smooth camera, but most of the hyper smooth footage is gonna be shot in 2.7K, 60 frames a second. Now for stabilization purposes, 60 frames a second is a little bit better because you just get more in between frames for the stabilization to really work its magic. But we only end up watching 30 frames a second when we play it back in the video, so the bottom one is just gonna be shooting in 30 frames a second. So for the initial test, I'm gonna rip a bunch of packs with a bunch of different settings on the hyper smooth camera And I'm also gonna rip a couple packs with just the normal 2.7 K 30 frames a second from the hero 7 Everything is gonna be left all on auto just to make sure that everything kind of stays the same Unfortunately with hyper smooth you can't use ND filters So I'm gonna leave the ND filters off of the non-stabilized GoPro just to make things seem even even though personally in my opinion I think having an ND filter on a non-stabilized GoPro looks infinitely better than no ND filter on a stabilized GoPro. But that's something I'll probably talk about in a later video. And if you wanna see how to properly use ND filters on GoPros, go ahead and check out the link in the description where I go over every step on how to properly use ND filters on these GoPros. Now let's go ahead, let's get on with the very first test. I'm going to do what I did with my fake Superview video where I'm going to make a montage of cutting back and forth between hyper smooth and non hyper smooth footage. I'm gonna see if you guys can pick it out and I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. And then after that, I'm gonna pick apart each video. We're gonna watch some side by side footage of the same flight, one from each GoPro, and we're gonna see if we can really notice a difference and see if Hypersmooth still does that weird thing where it kind of fucks the footage up. But let's go ahead, let's get on to the very first test. Thank you. 
All right, guys, that is it for the montage mashup. I actually haven't seen the clips yet, so let's go ahead, let's head on back to the lab, take a look at these clips side by side and see if we can honestly tell a difference between Hypersmooth on and Hypersmooth off. All right, guys, we are back in the studio. We are ready to look at this footage. <laughs> It is time to finally put Hypersmooth to the test. So I've gone ahead and I've taken the raw footage from the Hypersmooth GoPro and from the not Hypersmooth GoPro, put them side by side with labels, and then rendered out all of the footage. And I'm gonna go ahead right now, I'm gonna take a look at it and see if we can actually tell a difference between Hypersmooth footage and non Hypersmooth footage. So I also wanna point out this is totally raw, straight from the camera. So this is gonna be the most raw comparison that you can really have between Hypersmooth on and Hypersmooth off. The non Hypersmooth footage was shot in 2.7K 30 frames a second, and the Hypersmooth was shot in 2.7K 60 frames a second. Now the Hypersmooth footage is shot in 60 frames a second because the higher the frame rate, the better the stabilization can work. So I'm really kind of trying to give the edge to Hypersmooth because honestly, I really want it to work. Now I have tested Hypersmooth in the past before, but the footage that I got was pretty much unusable. It really didn't work. It caused a lot of micro vibrations. It kind of made the footage bounce all around the place and it really just straight up sucked. <laughs> But after a little bit of research, I realized I was pretty much doing everything wrong for it to work. I was shooting really late in the golden hour, which means that there's not gonna be as much light as if you're shooting midday, which means there's gonna be more motion blur and stabilization programs can't really work when the footage is too much motion blur in it because it can't lock on and track anything very well. And on top of that, I was shooting in 30 frames a second, which means you're basically giving the stabilization software half of the information compared to 60 frames a second to really kind of work its magic. So for this test, I went out midday, tons of light, no ND filters to make sure you get the least amount of motion blur possible. And I also shot in 60 frames a second to really try and give it the upper hand. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of the side-by-side -side footage and see if there's actually a difference. All right. As you see on the left, we have the hyper smooth footage and on the right, this is the non-stabilized footage at all. So these are both raw the camera, raw hyper smooth, raw just 2.7K, 30 frames a second, like every other FPV video. So for the first pack or so, I did a lot of this really incredibly smooth, long range style flying to kind of put it to the test in the scenario that people would actually use hyper smooth. But then later on, I went ahead and did a little more freestyle stuff to see if you could keep up. You know, it seems to actually be holding up really, really well. Huh. So one of the biggest giveaways of hyper smooth that I noticed was that whenever you get close to trees, whenever you kind of start doing hard maneuvers, it would kind of freak out a bit and sort of add these like weird oscillations. But uh, wow, that's smooth. Oh, look at that again. Let's go back. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, to be fair, the non-stabilized flying is pretty dang smooth but just look at like how little like extra bobbles and the all the little hesitation moves are just totally taken out of the hyper smooth footage i mean look even that little turn right there just that tiny little like turn i do to set up to go back and take a look at it i mean the non-stabilized this is really abrupt kind of like setting up maneuver but it, for the hyper smooth it all looks so well thought out. It didn't look like I hesitated at all. That's awesome. It didn't mess up once. And look at that. Even with like inverted yaw moves, it doesn't care. Uh, for a lot of this really smooth flying I did early on, I don't really notice much of a difference. I don't think it's really playing with the actual flight footage that much, but to be honest though, I used some really, really beat up props on purpose to kind of add some vibrations in that normally wouldn't be there. And to be fair, Hypersmooth is doing a really good job of just taking out those like micro vibrations. This is crazy. Look at this. All right, look at the non-stabilized portion here, okay? Just, just watch this. Going along, going along. You know, I'm trying to set up for something. Boom, right there. Look at that little, that little whoop. Like, look up, you know, kind of getting ready, setting myself up for something, and then look over on the hyper smooth side. Watch. Nothing. Nothing. It's like I didn't even move the sticks. 
That's fucking crazy. And look, you can see, let's go back a little bit, a little bit afterwards. Look at the clouds. You can see some vibrations and some jello coming into the non-stabilized portion. You know, those beat up props are kind of giving my quad a hard time. Also, the tune is totally off. I'm running two GoPros at the front. My battery is as far back slammed towards the back of the quad that I can make it. And the quad is definitely struggling to do this. And you can see the vibrations in the non-stabilized footage. But look, if we go back, look at the hyper smooth. Nothing, not even a blip, not the slightest bobble. It's like it tuned my quad for me. I mean, these were really janky props I was running too. Actually, for the last two times I've gone out to fly, I've totally forgotten to bring props with me. So I've been using the same beat up set of S3s for probably maybe five or six crashes now across two flying sessions. If there was one thing I can definitively say at this point that Hypersmooth does, it totally gets rid of all those little vibrations you get from either beat up props or a bad tune. So I feel like that's something that a lot of people struggle with is getting a really good proper setup where there's no vibrations in the flight footage. Cause even like the slightest little bit of vibrations, at least for me, really kind of annoy me to watch. So having something that can take those vibrations out is pretty awesome to have just straight built into your camera that you don't have to do anything to do. That's awesome. And also to be totally fair, just the normal flight footage doesn't really seem to be affected much. I mean, it does a little bit for some of those hesitation moves, but overall, it kind of leaves the footage basically intact, which is nice because sometimes for stabilization programs like Real Steady, your flight footage looks much different after the stabilization. And there's a really intense look that's given to the footage from the stabilization program, but Hypersmooth really just kind of subtly smooths out a little bit of the bumps and the vibrations that are just kind of inherent in the FPV footage without really touching the actual footage of you flying. All right, we gotta look at more of this stuff. Yeah, for the cinematic stuff, I'm not really noticing much of a difference. I mean, that's kind of expected that we think about it. It only stabilizes really things that need to be stabilized and I'm flying purposely incredibly smooth. And so the stabilization is not having to really work much. But I mean, you can definitely see these long straight lines. All those tiny little micro vibrations are definitely gone, which is awesome. Wow. I really think Hypersmooth is an awesome tool for those long range and cruising style of flights. It doesn't really change your flight footage much, but it definitely gets rid of like the vibrations and even some little bobbles here and there without actually making your footage different from what you thought it was gonna be. Look at that, even going to like a full roll right here, Hypersmooth didn't care. Usually, at least for my last testing, it would have just totally freaked out and she would have gone nuts all over the place. But this one, I mean, look, it actually almost smooths out my roll. That's awesome. This is crazy. Look at the difference in this orbit. Look, I line up and you can see the non-stabilized one. You know, I'm trying to do a smooth orbit. I put a little bit of inputs here, kind of go a little too fast, slow down, do a little roll and I kind of get it locked in place. You know, there's a little bit of like kind of unnecessary moves in there to try and line up and get the orbit perfectly circulating around. But let's look at the hyper smooth version of it. Look at this. I mean, look at that. Oh, would you look at this? <laughs> yeah, well. Would you look at that? Yeah. Not a bump in sight. That's insane. Let's look at it again. That's crazy it can do that. Oh my God. It's like the whole thing is on a gimbal. It totally smoothed out every little unwanted bump out of that footage. I'm stunned. I never in a million years would have thought it would have worked that well. I think from this point, what I've gathered is that it is definitely working pretty well, especially for those long range cruising style of flights. Even for some of the freestyle moves that I've been doing, Hypersmooth has been keeping up pretty well and it's going really unnoticed. And I think that's kind of one of the biggest things about having proper stabilization in is that you shouldn't notice that it's stabilized. It should just look smooth. And Hypersmooth is doing a really good job of staying unnoticed, but making the footage 
look just a little bit better. It's really taking out that last little bit of unwanted stuff out of your footage. And that alone really is mind blowing. But the real key is can Hyper Smooth keep up with actual proper freestyling? Because once the camera starts going all over the place, Hyper Smooth is gonna be put to the test to actually stabilize those quick erratic movements. So, uh, Let's see if he can do it. All right, here's a proper little freestyle run that I did while still doing the side-by-side -side footage. Also, keep in mind, I am running two GoPros. This is like an 850 gram quad now, so it's not gonna be as agile and responsive as it usually is, but this will definitely be a good run to see how Hypersmooth can act with a normal freestyle run. Not bad. Wow, to be totally, oh, look at that. Did you see that? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that prop wash that I had right there. See it? See the prop wash that I flow backwards into right there? Uh-huh, and the jerkiness. Look at this. Look at the hyper smooth footage during that. Nothing. Nothing at all, not even a fucking blip. It's just like, that's mind blowing. Prop wash is gone. Who cares about spending hundreds of hours tuning to get rid of prop wash? You just can turn hyper smooth on and it's gone. It's like it never existed. I'm actually stunned. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, let's uh, Let's keep going. This flying is really smooth as is, but look at this little part right here. As I'm going up the tree, you can kind of see a, just a little bit of bobbling, a little bit of hesitation as I'm going up, just some minor course corrections to make sure I don't get stuck in this tree. But look at the hyper smooth version of this. Watch, going up, perfect straight line, perfect arc. All right, now let's watch the non-stabilized version, watch. As I'm going up, you can see just the littlest bit of little course corrections, and they're totally gone to the hyper smooth footage. And look, even going through a gap and doing a roll, usually, at least from what I thought, hyper smooth was gonna totally freak out at it. But look, takes it like a champ. Like nothing even happened. Even inverted little stall moves like that, going up against a tree, cake, doesn't care. And look at that, look at coming out of that trick right there. You can see as I come in and I land, Slightly too hard of a stop, a little bit of a jerky yaw out of it. But look at this. Look at the hyper smooth side. Perfectly smooth. Looked totally plain. You would never know that that was smoothed out. Guys, guys, this is crazy. I'm shocked at how well this is working. I never would have thought in a million years that Hypersmooth would do anything like this, especially on something like an FPV quad, flying around, doing flips, inverted moves, yaw spins, like, wow. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and at this point, just go ahead and admit I was completely wrong about Hypersmooth. I totally thought that it was just gonna fuck up your footage like it did before. I totally thought it was just gonna fuck up your footage like it did for me when I first tried it. But when you use it with the right settings, and especially after the update they had a couple months ago, this may be cheating <laughs> using this. This is nuts. I mean, you could purposely try and take a quad and throw it into as much prop wash as possible and the hyper smooth would get rid of all of it. You'd be like, oh look, perfect tune. You could totally like dupe people into thinking you have the perfect tune with no prop wash just by putting hyper smooth on. That's, that's sly, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, the footage looks amazing. And to be totally honest, I'm probably gonna use it every now and then from here on out. Now, don't worry, it'll be completely obvious if I use it. I will make sure that I state I'm using it when I'm using it. But this is such a good tool to have. I gotta find a real ripper of a freestyle run and see if it's able to hold its own. Give me a second, guys. 12 seconds later. All right, pause on the whole freestyle run. You would not believe what I just came across. So there's this little playset on this park that I was flying at, 
and it had this little tunnel you could go through, but it had the tiniest little bitty gap. I mean, the gap was literally as tall as the two GoPros stacked together. Keep in mind when I go through this gap, I'm running a normal freestyle quad with a GoPro and a second GoPro on top of it. So I'm trying to squeeze this elephant through the tiniest little gap. I'm making little course corrections and stuff like that. I'm trying to make sure it's perfectly lined up because I don't want to smash these GoPros. And look what happens. All right, so I come around the corner you can see I'm kind of like even just those little bobbles I'm doing to try and get myself set up in the stabilized version. Just a little bit of, you know, tiny little course corrections just to make sure I'm lined up. And then look at the hyper smooth footage. Look, nothing. Perfectly smooth arc. Totally planned, no corrections. That's awesome. And even look, you can see all these vibrations coming in over here. Tiny little course corrections. I even barely hit the bottom of the play set and had a little bump but guess what let's look back look at the hyper smooth side look at this not even a blip nothing <laughs> oh my god this is crazy i had to show you that i'm gonna go find a cool freestyle run now three weeks later all right here's a pretty good little freestyle run that i had on my last pack just take a look at this. This is nuts. So the non-stabilized section is pretty smooth, you know? Pretty smooth, but just look at the hyper-smooth section. It just does that extra little bit to really just make it look phenomenal. I mean, the unstabilized portion is still really good flight footage. But the hyper smooth is like, take the normal run and just make it perfect. Like you just take that run that's just like 95% there. You're like, God, that was such a good run. I feel like I had some really good lines. The tricks were well done, but there was just the occasional little bobble you had there. There was that slight little hesitation you had that kind of just ruined like the flow of the run. But it's not there in the hyper smooth. This is just amazing. I cannot believe that it has worked as well as it does. And look at this, guys. This is crazy. Usually hyper smooth freaks out on those crazy fast moves, but right here. That exit from the Juicy Flick, I mean, it's absolutely perfect. And it looks like it was perfectly executed. Okay, I gotta stop it here. I am mind blown just <laughs> on how well Hypersmooth actually worked. All right, guys, I really gotta admit, I was completely wrong on Hypersmooth. I thought it wasn't gonna work at all. For my last testing, I thought I was just gonna totally the footage up again, but no, it actually works incredibly well. Now, I don't think it's gonna take bad footage and make it look good. And also keep in mind, having Hyper Smooth on isn't gonna make you do that Matty flip to the trees that you thought you were gonna do. It's not gonna move the sticks for you, but what it does a really, really good job of is just smoothing out the tiniest little bits of like, inconsistencies in the footage the tiny little course corrections that you make sometime, the vibrations you get from your tune being off or the props being bad, those tiny little things that if you're really analytical watching your FPV footage that kind of irk you, those are gone. Now, the big things like doing the tricks and picking proper lines and stuff like that, that's still totally down to you as a pilot to get those right. And the first 95% of getting that perfect footage is gonna be on the pilot side. But just the last little bits of stuff that you don't like in that footage, I mean, it works. It really just simply turn it on. And as long as you're not using an ND filter or filming in low light, it really just does a good job. <laughs> Honestly, from my point of view, I'm usually really critical of the footage when I'm editing it. And anytime I see those little hesitations or those tiny little course corrections, usually I just cut the whole footage out. I don't think it looks good, so why would I put it in my video? But with HyperSmooth on, I mean, it really kind of opens up a lot more usable footage for people who are really hypercritical. This is gonna go ahead and bring us full circle back to the point of this video. Is HyperSmooth cheating? Personally, in my opinion, no. Now, we just saw that it works really well and it can smooth out and make your footage look better even if you didn't pilot it as well as people may thought you have. And I think one of the biggest takeaways is that for making freestyle videos and putting your FPV footage 
on the internet, at least for myself, it's about making content that people like to watch. And if turning a sitting on my GoPro on makes the footage more enjoyable, then I don't really see what's wrong in that, especially since that uploading your videos doesn't really mean you're competing with other people for who's the best pilot. We're just trying to make videos that people want to watch. And also another point I want to bring up is that HyperSmooth doesn't take crappy footage and make it awesome. It just smooths out tiny little things in the footage, but there's already things implemented in all of the flight firmwares out there that can actually already do that. For example, things like cranking your D terms up, increasing your RC smoothing, and even things like running really high gyro and D term filters can actually kind of replicate the same effects that HyperSmooth can. Now in saying that, when you do try and do all the smoothing on the flight control side, the actual stick feel is gonna suffer and it's going to feel a lot looser and less responsive on the sticks. But again, that's a trade-off for being able to do this crazy smoothing in the flight control software. Now with HyperSmooth, this is kind of a way to get that really smooth look you get from running really high filters or really high RC smoothing while still actually having the quad tuned and flying the way that you want it. And again, the actual amount of smoothing HyperSmooth does is not that large. So it's not like you have to have a Hero 7 with HyperSmooth to make smooth footage. Really, all it does is kind of just nail down that last 5% of smoothness in your video that you want to add. Now, in saying this, I do want to say there are definitely unethical and immoral ways to use HyperSmooth. One of the ways that I've seen brought up is that if you're trying to sell a new flight controller or some new motors or props or something like that and say, oh, these components cannot produce prop wash. You'll absolutely get zero prop wash every time you use them. And then you use HyperSmooth to get rid of the prop wash even though it's actually still there. But that's kind of more on the theoretical marketing manipulation side of things. But for just making engaging content and making freestyle videos that people want to watch, I really don't think there's anything wrong with it. You can make smooth footage with HyperSmooth. You can make smooth footage without HyperSmooth. HyperSmooth just does that last little bit to really kind of nail down that smooth look in your footage. All right, guys, in saying that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't hit the bell. And also, a little side note, if you haven't noticed, there is a new link in the description. Yes, I have created a Patreon. So if you guys haven't noticed, I have been making these videos full time for you guys for about four or five months now since I graduated. If you like these videos I'm making for you guys, feel free to sign up. You can do it for as little as one dollar. If you don't want to do it, don't feel pressured to. I don't blame you, but, but I greatly appreciate any of you who do. I'm still trying to work out exactly the benefits that Patreon members get. I will be coming out with those soon. There's probably going to be stickers, merch. I don't have the exact details of the benefits of being a Patreon just yet, but there will be things like stickers, merch, behind the scenes content, unreleased videos. There's going to be a a lot of cool stuff on there that I'm gonna make for you guys but as always do not like this video leave a nasty comment if you're a real fan I'm releasing new videos every Monday and Thursday every single week so make sure you have that bell hit so you don't miss an upload and I will see you guys next time